Hi, I'm Melissa Etter and I teach psychology at AC in addition to being a librarian. In this video I'll show you two cool ways to use something you're probably already familiar with, Google. The first I'll show you is Google Scholar and it's actually a different part of Google. So you should be able to find, just as the name suggests, scholarly sources that you might not stumble across using the plain old Google search bar. And at AC, we've paid for a service that shows you when results on a Google Scholar list are available to you through our library. But to get that to work, it's best if you first log into your AC Connect account. Stay logged in and just open up another tab. And now, you can go to Google Scholar by typing in the URL scholar.google.com. You can truly search for anything in here. Much like Google will find information on just about everything, you can also find scholarly articles on lots of topics, not just those for your psychology or sociology classes. Let's say I'm interested in psychological testing for ADHD. Now with Google, and even with Google Scholar, you can just type that right up here, but your search results would be better if you use a couple of librarian tricks. First, I'm going to delete the unimportant word of for. I do not need a list of articles that use the word for in their text. Next, I'll surround the phrase of psychological testing with quotation marks. That tells the computer that I want this exact phrase, these two words hooked together just like this. I don't want articles talking about testing for pesticides. I want psychological testing specifically. Now some authors might use the abbreviation ADHD, but some might instead use the full name, which is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, which I'll also surround with quotation marks. When I hit search, Notice that along the right here, there are links to some of these results. That means we have it, and you can just click on it to open it right up. You can also place some limits, like a date range, by using this menu over here on the left. Next, I'm going to show you a different way of searching plain old Google by using the advanced search. Go to the URL google.com slash advanced underscore search. This screen looks more like a library database and gives you a bit more control. There are quite a few assignments at AC where students are required to find local sources. Amarillo's newspaper is located at the URL amarillo.com. You can type that website in right here. Or maybe you wanted to search for sources on more trustworthy types of websites. Then you can use the same box to search for your subject only in sites with specific domains. The domain of a website URL is the three letters that appear between the first two sets of slashes in the URL. So right here is AC's domain of EDU. EDU designates educational institution. .edu's are pretty good, trustworthy sites that you can count on. Not always, but almost always. You can also typically count on information you find at sites with .gov, .mil, and most of the .orgs. Those domains respectively stand for government, military, and organization. Some .orgs aren't so trustworthy, but there are great ones, like the APA's website. In this same section, I've also used this option to search only the text of a page. That way the whole page will hopefully be about my topic, and it won't just be that my search term appears in some random statement down at the bottom of the page where they have the copyright date. I've also used this date restriction to search things that have been updated within the last year, searched for information pertaining to the United States, and set this to the English language. In the top section, it appears much more like the search boxes you'll see in library databases, and these also allow you to use some of the same tricks, like putting quotation marks around your exact phrases here in this box and listing all of your synonyms here. If I wanted to search for the etiology of schizophrenia, I could just type those two words in this top box here. But just type those important keywords, not full sentences or questions. You can do more on this page, so play with it, but before I wrap up this video, I want to show you how to cite sources you find using Google Scholar or Google Advanced. Unlike when you use the library databases, there isn't a button you can just click to get the citation in whichever style you're using, so you have to do it yourself. There are online programs that you can use to generate citations, but be careful using those. Sometimes they don't work at all or are just plain wrong, and I've known lots of students to get points deducted on their assignments. The library put together a guide that you can find by going to actx.libguides.com APA or if you're using a different style, use slash MLA or slash Chicago. Those are the three styles that we use here at AC. Down here toward the bottom of this guide, you can find a quick guide that's a single page. It's double-sided. On this page of the guide, it shows you what your references page should look like, and you'll probably want to copy one of the two entries you see here. It is possible that the web page you're looking at will include an author, especially if you use Google Scholar. And if that's the case, put the author's last name, 
then a comma, and then the author's first name initial. If the author uses a middle name or initial, include that as an initial as well. So if I had published a page using my full name, Melissa Suzanne Etter, even if I wrote out my full name on the author line, when you're citing my page following APA, you'll actually type Etter, comma, M period, space, S period. This first one includes a date that the actual page was published. That's not just a copyright date, which is only talking about when the entire website was updated. That's not the same as when this very information on this particular page was written. So if you can't find a date, which is often the case using web resources, follow this example. These start with the title of the page. In parentheses, you'll include the date or type lowercase n period d period, standing for no date. After the word retrieved, type in the date that you accessed this page yourself. And then after the word from, paste in the full URL. Just copy it from the browser bar. If this quick explanation doesn't make sense, be sure to read more on this guide or go see a librarian or a tutor in the writer's corner. And please ask your instructor if you have any additional questions. If you haven't already watched the video on using library databases for research in the behavioral sciences, you might want to check it out. Thanks for watching this.